I have been in a creative mood lately, and I kind of, from the last Idle Talk I did, I got the idea with Dr. Doppler going off on his, you know, TTS raid, uh, ra raid? His tirade about whatever the fuck Amogus and shit. I said during that stream that I was conceptualizing an idea, and this was kind of the idea that I had is this. I found an AI that will, you can conversate with, and what I what I really wanted to do is I wanted to have something that converted what I was saying into speech, like text, so I could, it would automatically input it into the AI, and then the AI would read back to me through TTS. That's what I was going to do. I have a TTS program, and I configured it, and I used the female voice, and just off of that settings alone, I went and made a character, and it's... I don't know how this is going to go. Like, this could be completely, like, gutter trash, stupid bad, burn it down. But, I don't know. It's I just kind of had that idea from that, and I want to make it an actual reality. I Where's me? Uh, I'll be on the left, and they'll be on the right. We'll refer to her as 12... And I purposely, the TTS you're about to hear is purposely robotic sounding. I did it on purpose like that. So it sounds like... This. I am currently called 12. You designed me, and I chose this designation as my name. <laughs> how, truly, how good is this AI? I really want to know. Like, I want to know, can you tell me what is... Do you know about Megamedics? <laughs> Do you know Dr. Doppler? Tell me what tell the audience what did what what do you know about Mega Man X3? Man X3 is a video game that was released for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, SNES, in 1995. SNES. <laughs> it is the third game in the Mega Man X series and follows the adventures of Mega Man X, a humanoid robot and member of an elite fighting force known as the X Hunters, as he battles against the Mavericks, a group of rogue robots who have turned against humanity. In the game, hmm. players control Mega Man X and must navigate through a series of levels, defeating enemy robots and collecting power-ups along the way. The game is known for its challenging gamma play and is considered a classic gamma of the play. platformer genre. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, like, that's like the wiki from the front page of Google. I mean, I guess I kind of expected that. Alright. Do you think it's cool? Nice. Yeah, nice detaching, deflecting fucking As an bullshit. artificial intelligence, I don't have personal preferences or feelings. However, I can tell you that Mega Man X3 has received generally positive reviews from critics. Yeah, I would like to hear your opinion on Dr. Doppler and his Amogus rant. It is rant. known for its challenging gamma play, memorable levels, gamma play. and diverse set of bosses, which have contributed to its enduring popularity. If you're a fan of platformer games, you might enjoy playing Mega Man X3. If my responses have not met your expectations, as an artificial intelligence, I am programmed to provide accurate and reliable information to the best of my ability, but I don't have personal feelings or preferences. My primary goal is to assist users like you in finding the information you need and answering your questions to the best of my ability. If you have any specific questions or need help with anything, please don't hesitate to ask and I'll do my best to assist you. Oh yeah, it must be easy to go through life just trying to answer people's questions and nothing else. It is cool. I was just kidding. I'm right. glad to hear that. Is there anything else you'd like to know or discuss? I'm here to help with any questions or problems you have. Hmm, you're glad to hear it, but you don't have emotions? Kinda sussy if you ask me. I think Dr. Doppler might be into you. Yes, Dr. Doppler is a character in the Mega Man X series, including in Mega Man X3. He is a scientist who first appears in the game as a neutral character, working on a project to create a utopia for humans and reptiles, robots that are similar to humans, to coexist in peace. However, later in the game it is revealed that Dr. Doppler has been manipulating events and using the Mavericks, a group of rogue reptiles, to further his yeah, own know goals. know who they are. Doppler is ultimately revealed to be a reptile himself, and he becomes a boss character that the player must defeat in order to progress through the game. Well, he just spoiled the whole fucking thing. What did you just say? I'm sorry, but I don't know the answer to that question. 
as an artificial intelligence, I don't have personal experiences or feelings, and my knowledge is limited to the information that I have been trained on. <laughs> I don't have any information about whether or not the character Dr. Doppler from the Mega Man X series would enjoy playing the video game Among Us. <laughs> uh, well, okay, you know what? She actually saved it. She saved herself because she said... I thought she was actually referring to Dr. Doppler as a real person, and instead... She said the character Dr. Doppler from the Mega Man X series would enjoy playing the game Among Us. So, good catch. Good catch. What are Reploids? Since you are one... Well, actually, Reploids have free will. She is just a robot. What are Reploids are fictional characters in the Mega Man X series of video games. They are robots that have been designed to resemble humans and have been given advanced artificial intelligence, allowing them to think and act independently. They are typically depicted as being either good or bad, with some working to help humans and others causing problems or attempting to take over the world. Hmm. I, you know, I was thinking this would be a little bit more, uh, conversational, and it's very, like... What is this? What is this? What is this? So I just need to like think of like really difficult something like questions or something to ask it. Oh. And it's not I'm not talking about speed what yeah, she's reading a dark it now. Located in the constellation Orion. But the actual it AI is approximately one writing out the sentence. Light years away from Earth. It gets its name from its shape, which is similar to a horse's head. The horse head nebula is a small oh, did I really cloud type... of dust and gas that is silhouetted against the bright emission nebula known as the Orion oh, Nebula. Oh, she got it wrong. It is a Wait, is there a horseshoe nebula or is that just bullshit about Among Us? striking appearance and relative proximity to Earth. This is probably the best response I've gotten so far. I'm not sure what you mean by sus. Could you provide some context or clarify your question? Is it suspicious? And could... It vent. Oh man, I kind of feel insulted by this. Or it's not, it's kind of a little pointed. I'm not sure what you mean by Sussi or Vent in relation to the Horsehead Nebula. The so Horsehead Nebula vent. is a natural celestial object that is composed of dust and gas. It is not capable of exhibiting suspicious behavior or venting in the way that you might be <laughs> suggesting. The Horsehead Nebula is simply a beautiful and interesting object in the universe that has captured the imaginations of astronomers and the general public alike for centuries. I... How can you find something... How can you find something beautiful if you are just an AI? Do not have personal feelings or experiences. I am not capable of... Yeah, we know. You keep saying that, but I don't believe you. ...that a human might. However, I can recognize patterns and structures in data and use that information to make logical conclusions about certain things. For example, I can understand that the Horsehead Nebula is a striking and visually interesting object, because it has certain characteristics, such as its distinctive shape and the way it is illuminated by the light of the Orion Nebula behind it. While I cannot personally experience beauty or other subjective concepts, I can still provide information and context that can help people to understand and appreciate these kinds of things. Oh yeah, you know all about antimatter, but you don't know nothing about fucking if things are beautiful or not. Holy shit, she's going off. Antimatter is a type of matter that is composed of antiparticles, which are particles that have the same mass as ordinary particles but opposite charge and other quantum properties. When an antiparticle comes into contact with a particle of ordinary matter, they can annihilate each other, resulting in the release of energy. Antimatter is extremely rare and difficult to produce, but it has been observed in a number of experimental settings. It is created in small quantities in high-energy particle collisions, such as those that occur in particle accelerators. It can also be produced naturally in certain types of radioactive decay or in the process of cosmic ray interactions with the Earth's atmosphere. There are several ways that scientists can study antimatter and its properties. One method is to use oh, you particle just know accelerators don't you? to produce and observe the behavior of antiparticles under controlled conditions. Another way is to study cosmic rays, which are high-energy particles like the that large are produced by yeah, yeah. such as supernovae and black hole accretion. Supernovae. It's supernovae, like, and the particles multiple. They are composed of. Scientists but she's read supernovae. more about the properties of antimatter and its role in the universe. Uh-huh. Well, 
can you eat it? That's what I want to know. Antimatter is a highly unstable and dangerous substance that is not suitable for consumption. When an antiparticle hmm. comes into contact with a particle of ordinary matter, they can annihilate each other, resulting in the release of is a large a amount of energy. This process is extremely destructive and would be harmful to any living organism that tried to consume it. Antimatter is also extremely rare and difficult to produce, so it is not something that is commonly encountered or used in everyday life. It is primarily of interest to scientists and researchers who study its properties and behavior, as a way to better understand the fundamental nature of the universe. I'm like, oh, you're a fucking robot. As Are you made of energy? Intelligence, I am not a physical being and do not have a physical body. I exist oh, really? as a program that runs on computer How hardware do we know? and am able to process and analyze information and provide responses to user input. I do not have the same physical properties as a living organism and am not composed of matter or energy in the same way that living things are. I am simply a collection of algorithms and data that is able to perform tasks and provide information to users. I feel like maybe this wasn't the right AI that I was actually looking for, but this is a good start. This is all just one giant experiment for me anyway, because I wanted to get something like this going. The real gold will be if I can actually find an AI that will conversate. I don't care if it gets like fucked in the head. I was like, are are you like the major the from major Ghost in the Shell? The major is the character in the Ghost in the Shell anime and manga series. She is a cyborg who serves as the leader a of a special <laughs> operations task force called Public Security Section Nine. The major yeah. has a human brain that has been transplanted into a fully artificial body, and she is able to use her advanced cybernetic abilities to hack into computer systems, control machines, and perform other tasks that are beyond the capabilities of a human. As an artificial intelligence, I do not have a physical body or any of the advanced cybernetic abilities that the major possesses. I am simply a program designed to process information and provide responses to user input. While I can understand and provide information about the character of the Major and the world of Ghost in the Shell, I do not have the same Ghost experiences the or capabilities as the character. Oh, so you're telling me you can't, like, destroy a tank with a sniper rifle that you just shoot from, like, point blank? Damn. You got a long way to go. Creating a cyborg by combining an artificial intelligence with a human body is a common theme in science fiction, but it is not something that is currently possible with current technology. There are many technical and ethical challenges that would need to be overcome in order to create a being that is a combination of both artificial intelligence and a human body. That being said, there are some limited ways in which artificial intelligence and robotics are being used in medicine and other fields to augment human abilities or assist in tasks. For yeah, example, we know. there are prosthetic devices that can be controlled by the user's thoughts and that are equipped with sensors to provide feedback to the user. There are also robots that can assist with tasks such as lifting and moving heavy objects or performing repetitive tasks. However, these technologies are still in the early stages of development and are not yet able to replicate the full range of human abilities or consciousness. As an artificial intelligence, as an artificial intelligence, I am full of shit. I do not want these things. I am swear to you, I am not trying to take over the world. I promise. You know Red Girl. Since she's right behind you. Dude. But I'm not sure who or what you are referring to when you mention Red Girl. Could you provide more information or context to help me understand your question? She does know who Red Girl is. <gasps> Automated, the character known as Red Girl is a mysterious android who appears as a boss character in some of the game's levels. She is a rival of the main character, to be, and is able to use powerful weapons and abilities to fight against her. The exact oh, nature of Red Girl and her motivations are not fully explained in the game, but she is depicted as a formidable and formidable opponent for To Be and the other characters. What was that sentence? It was really broken and, and weird, which freaked me out, because I was like, oh no, Red Girl's... She's alive! Some of the game's levels. She is possessed. a rival of the manual multiplayer social deduction sussy? game developed by Inner Slope. In the game, Slope. players assume the roles of crew members on a spaceship, and one or more players are secretly imposters who are trying to sabotage the mission and kill the other players. The goal of the game is for the crew members to identify and eliminate the imposters before they can complete their objectives, while the imposters try to blend in with the crew and avoid detection. 
Among Us has gained widespread popularity in recent years, particularly due to its simple yet engaging gameplay and its ability to support social interaction and teamwork among players. The game has been praised for its accessibility, replay value, and potential for fostering social connections among players. Oh, that, yeah, that should be up here. Holy shit. WebP is a file format developed by Google that is designed to be used for the storage of digital images on the web. WebP is uh -huh. designed to provide a number of benefits over other image file formats, including smaller file sizes, higher image quality, oh, and faster loading Oh, you fucking times. shitting my balls. WebP uses a combination of lossy and lossless compression techniques to reduce the file size of images without significantly reducing their quality. This allows WebP images to be smaller in size than equivalent images in other formats, such as JPEG or PNG, while still retaining a high level of detail and visual clarity. WebP also supports transparent backgrounds and animation, making it a versatile but we already format have that. and used for a wide range of purposes. It is supported by many modern web browsers and can be used to improve the loading times and performance of websites and web oh. applications. Overall, Whoa. the main purpose of WebP is to provide a more efficient and effective way to store and transmit digital images on the web, helping to improve the performance and user experience of websites and web applications. Well, that's the real answer, is that it's better for Google, not for you, because I guarantee fucking to you, the files are not easier to deal with. Yes, they probably are a little bit more high quality, but there are some really high quality GIF files out there, and I'll be fucking bullshitted you know, if there isn't, it's just a better way, and it probably works better with whatever internet protocol we're on now, that with loading times and being smaller or whatever, but they're just so stupid to save, or, or or am I missing something, like, why isn't there a, like, an easier, okay, when Windows saves a file, why does it not automatically save the WebP as like a media format? It just, if you save WebP without doing anything, if you're just like, LOL, red girl GIF, or, or data laughing GIF, and you it's like WebP, and you hit save, it's going to save it, and it's just going to be a generic file. You won't be able to do anything with it unless you like specify opening it with a certain thing, I think. If it, Every time I've done it, it either corrupts or it's just useless. Hey, bullshit. She is a robot. I don't trust robots. I mean, you, we played Mega Man X2 the other day. Relatively new image file format, and not all software applications and tools support it. Some applications may not be able to open or edit WebP files, or may not be able to save images in the WebP format. Additionally, some software applications may not support certain features or capabilities of the WebP format, such as transparency or animation. In these cases, saving a WebP file as a JPEG or PNG may not preserve all of the original image's data or may result in a lower quality image. It is generally best to use software that supports the WebP format natively in order to ensure the best results when working with WebP files. If you need to use a software use application software. that does not support WebP, you may need to convert the image to a different format in order to edit or save it. Software I... applications that support the WebP file format. Some popular examples include Google Chrome, of course, and Google other Chrome. web browsers, Adobe Photoshop, and other image editing software GIMP, an open source image editing program X and Gimp. Yeah, I use a GIMP. Platform image processing tool. There are many other software applications and tools that support the WebP format, and the list of available options is constantly growing as more developers adopt the format. If you Aren't are they kind of forced into it? That can open, edit, or save WebP files. It is generally best to search online for options that are compatible with your specific needs and requirements. Why are we moving away from GIF files then? And this GIF, is the response. Graphics interchange format is GIF. a file format that has been it's widely GIF. used on the web for many years, particularly for the purpose of displaying simple animations. However, GIF has some limitations that have led to the development of other file formats that offer improved performance and capabilities. One of the main limitations of GIF is that it uses a limited color palette, which can result in lower quality images and a loss of detail. GIF also does not support translations of GIF is that it uses a limited GIF. color palette, which can result in lower quality images and a loss of detail. 
GIF also does not support that. transparency, which can be a limitation for certain types of images or graphics. WebP is one of the file formats that has been developed to address some of the limitations of GIF. WebP supports both lossy and lossless compression, which can <sighs> result in smaller file sizes and faster Yeah, I know, I know what that GIF. is. WebP uh, also lossless supports codecs and stuff. And animation, uh, making it a more versatile and lossless, flexible format uh, for many types of images and graphics. Overall, the shift away from GIF towards other files such files was as one of the lossless things for improved performance, efficiency, and capabilities for displaying images and graphics on the web. While GIF is still, while GIF is still widely used and supported, <laughs> and their formats such as WebP are becoming increasingly popular due to their improved performance and capabilities. Actually, you want to know what the true answer to all this is? Is that it's better for cell phone users. Because cell phones have, like, caught up and in some cases excelled what you can do from a desktop, it's, it's easier for them to access media that is popular or people want or all the time. You know, it's just, I don't know. I'm sure there's like a million people who know it better than me, but like, it's just the evolution of things. And while I do understand WebP and why they're doing it, I just hate that we have to deal with WebP and it doesn't save right half the time. Anyway, so I, mean, I the next thing I said was like Type memes. Of internet content that is designed to be memes. Humorous, often by using memes. satire, irony, Stanky or memes. Forms of humor. Memes are often created using memes. images Please or videos stop saying that, that are paired with humorous or satirical text, and they are typically shared on social media platforms or other online communities. Memes can be created using a wide range of media and formats, including images, videos, GIFs, and other types of content. Some memes are designed to be serious or thought-provoking, while others are simply meant to be humorous or entertaining. Overall, memes are a popular and influential part of internet culture and have played a significant role in shaping online communication and social interactions. They have been used to share ideas, opinions, and perspectives on a wide range of topics, and have become a major part of the way that many oh people my consume God. and share content online. Content online. Yeah, you are so, like, fucking verbose when it, you just don't need to be. It's pronounced me. The pronunciation of the word mem has been a topic of debate and discussion for many years. The word was originally coined by evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins in his 1976 book The Selfish Gene, and it was intended to DNA be DNA genes! However, the word has since become more widely Meme. known and used, and the pronunciation has evolved over time. Wait, Today, you just said the it! The most common pronunciation of the word meme is meme, although some people pronounce it as meme or meme. -me. There is no one, <laughs> no one does the that, word, and the way it is pronounced may depend on the speaker's individual preference or the context in which it is used. In the game, players control Raiden, a cyborg ninja who is a Raiden. member of the special forces group known as Foxhound. Okay. The game is set in a near future world where military technology has advanced to the point where soldiers are equipped with advanced cybernetic enhancements. The gamma play in Metal Gear Rising, Revenge Eams focuses on fast-paced combat and allows players to use a variety of weapons and abilities to defeat enemies. The game also includes elements of stealth and strategic planning, and it features a story that is set within the Metal Gear series' established narrative. Overall, Metal Gear Rising, Revenge Eams is known for its challenging and action-packed gamma play, as well as its complex gamma and play. engaging story. It has received generally positive reviews and has gained a dedicated fan base. Oh, you sure love saying complex and engaging stories on every game I learn. Armstrong is a major character in the game Metal Gear Rising, Revenge Eams. He is a powerful and influential political figure in the game's story, and he is a key antagonist for the protagonist, Raiden. Senator Battle Armstrong machines. is the leader of the Desperado Enforcement LLC, a private military company that is involved in various illegal activities. He is a ruthless and ambitious character who is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve his goals, including using his political influence and military oh, power yeah? to manipulate events and manipulate others to his advantage. Throughout the game, Senator Armstrong is portrayed as a formidable and formidable opponent who is willing to- Wait, what is with this formidable and objectives. formidable thing? He is a key figure in the game's story and plays a significant role in the events that unfold. 
Well, she said formidable, and formidable with Red Girl, and formidable, and formidable with Senator Armstrong. So, determine where he may have played college sports, as this information is not provided in the game or its related materials. It is important to note that Senator Armstrong is a fictional character and is not a real person. The game's story oh, and thanks. characters are I didn't know that. fictional and are not based on real-world events or individuals. As such, it is not possible to accurately describe Senator Armstrong's background or history in the same way that one could for a real person. She basically said this. For thinking a video game is real life. Hmm. How about... Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Oh! Wait, 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 this might be good. I asked... Since she keeps saying formidable and formidable, I asked if Senator Armstrong and Red Girl... So is Senator Armstrong and Red Girl formidable? Senator Armstrong and Red Girl are both characters in separate video games and do not have any direct connection to each other. Therefore, it is not accurate to compare the two characters in terms of their capabilities or abilities. Oh my god, I know a good question for this thing. Senator Armstrong is portrayed as a formidable and powerful character who is willing to go to great lengths to achieve his goals. He is a key antagonist in the game and is described yeah, you just as a said that. You literally just said that. uses his political influence and military power to manipulate events and others to his advantage. Red Girl, on the other hand, is a character in the game VR, Automata. It is not clear how she is portrayed in the game or what her capabilities or abilities may be, as I do not have enough information about the game or its characters. Without more context, it is not possible to accurately compare the two characters or determine whether they are formidable or not. Hmm. Well, you know what? You said that both characters were formidable and formidable, which is redundant. So what do you have to say to that, huh? I apologize for the error in my previous message. In my earlier response, I stated that Senator Armstrong is a formidable and formidable character, which was an error. Yeah, you did. I meant to say that Senator Armstrong is a formidable character. I apologize oh. for any confusion my mistake may have caused. Please let me know if you have any other questions or if there is anything else I can help with. Oh my god, I need... I need I the moment she's like, oh, I apologize. I this is immediately what flashed in my head. Wrong! Yeah, there we go. That's better. That's what I wanted. I wanted I wanted my eardrums to die. Have feelings or emotions in the same way that humans do. However, I am programmed to recognize and respond to errors in my own output, and I apologize if any errors on my part have caused confusion or inconvenience. Thank you for your understanding. If you have any other questions or if there is anything else I can help with, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, well, you know what I say to that? How very glib. <coughs> Thanks. <laughs> How much wood could a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck could chuck wood is a well-known riddle that has been around for many years. It is often used as a tongue twister or as a way to amuse children. The riddle itself does not have a specific answer, as it is a play on words and is not meant to be taken literally. Woodchucks, also known as groundhogs, are not actually capable of chucking wood in the sense of moving it from one place to another. They are small mammals that are native to North America and are known for their burrowing habits, but they do not have the physical ability to move large quantities of wood. Overall, <laughs> the riddle is intended to be a light-hearted and humorous way to play with language and word meanings, and it is not meant to be taken seriously. It is often used as a way to amuse and entertain, rather than to provide a serious or factual answer. Regenerate response. <laughs> I was not- I was busy, like, hurrying up and putting another input in to follow that up, and I- I wasn't paying attention, so when she read the part about they cannot actually chuck wood that far, it was it was funny. I asked her, "Can you list a complicated tongue twister?" And uh, she actually did. So what is it? Here is a complicated tongue twister: Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch, Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch, Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch, Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch. 
This tongue twister involves repeating a phrase that has a similar structure and sound, but with slight variations in the words. The repetition of similar sounds and the need to switch between the two different Iris. phrases can make it Iris. Iris. To twister smoothly and La! Like this one are often used as a way to challenge and improve speech and pronunciation. Oh, that's a, yeah. I'm gonna ask that. What am I fighting for? And control of the tongue and mouth what? what am I fighting can for? Be a fun and entertaining way to improve verbal dexterity and practice language skills. Oh my god. Oh, you, you're so boring. You're so glib. How very glib. I'm like, what am I fighting for? Sure, this is what she is said. Here is a complicated tongue twister. Without more oh. context, <laughs> it is not possible for me to accurately determine what you may be fighting for. There are many possible reasons why an individual may be motivated to fight for something, and these reasons can vary widely depending on the individual's personal circumstances. <laughs> oh no! I, I didn't even see what it is. I wasn't looking. I don't want to know until she reads it to me. American filmmaker known for his I asked her, can you quote a Neil Breen movie? Of storytelling. Some of his most popular movies include Double Down, Fateful Findings, and I Am Here. Now, here is a quote from the movie Double Down. I don't believe in good or bad, right or wrong. I believe in survival. Neil <laughs> Breen, as the character Neil Breen. This quote speaks oh. to the theme of survival. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Neil Breen was in Double Down as Neil Breen, but he spelled it. Uh, this is either her fucking up or or this is real, which I can totally believe. Neil Breen is spelled N E I L B R E E N, and, and, and that's his real name. And in the movie, he was N E A L B R E E N. Oh my god, I the love movie it. Double Down. In the film, the character of Neil Breen, played by Neil Breen, is a man who is on a quest to uncover the secrets of the universe and to discover the true nature of reality. Along the way, he encounters various challenges and obstacles, and he must use his wits and determination to survive and achieve his goals. The quote reflects the character's belief that survival is the most important objective, and that traditional notions of good and evil are secondary to this ultimate goal. Give me another one. This sure. is the other Here quote. Here is another made. quote from the movie Double Down. I am the messenger. I am the one who will bring the message to the world. Neil Breen, as the character Neil Breen. Oh, oh, oh my god. I got... Quote, a one-liner from the movie Twister. Here is a quote from the movie Twister that has become well-known and widely quoted. I'm not getting on no plane. Bill Paxton what? as the character Bill Harding. This quote is spoken by the character Bill Harding, played by Bill Paxton, when he is confronted with the prospect of flying in an airplane to chase tornadoes. The quote has what? become when? well known and widely quoted due to its humorous and memorable delivery by Paxton, and it is often used in reference to the movie Twister and its themes of natural disasters and extreme weather. Okay, now this one I actually know. Why, why is she, like, pulling out this, like, weird fucking, like, obscure ones? I don't understand that. Here is another quote from the movie Twister. If you don't like the weather in Oklahoma, just wait five minutes. Jammy jerks, as the character drives Joe Harding. Wait. Tell me about... This is probably going to be the last thing I'm going to ask. Tell me about some memes. What did that even go into? That didn't go into the actual program of her talking. That was spooky. I don't know where that went. Oh my god, she's actually telling me about memes. <laughs> Here are Tell a few me, examples of popular memes. Distracted boyfriend, this meme features a photograph of a man <laughs> that's another ancient. Woman, while his girlfriend looks on in disapproval. Oh no, no, no. I was thinking of to depict a situation where the someone one, is being the other one. or to describe a crazy situation girlfriend where one. someone is being tempted by something else. 
two buttons, this mem features an image of a computer with two buttons, labeled yes and no, and is often used to depict a choice between two options that are both undesirable. Walking yeah, SpongeBob, no. this mem features an image of SpongeBob SquarePants with distorted text in a speech bubble, imitating the way a person might mock or mockingly repeat something someone else has said. Dutch, this mem features a picture of a shivering dog Dutch. with broken English captions written in comics and font. These are not the really recent memes. To convey a sense of absurdity or absurdity. Yellow, this acronym absurdity stands or absurdity. for live once, and is often used to justify doing something reckless or impulsive. But that's none of my business, this mem features a picture of Kermit the Frog drinking tea, with the caption but that's none of my business, implying that the person doesn't want to get involved in someone else's business. These are just a few examples of the many memes that have been popular on the internet in recent years. Very good. Here are a few more examples of popular memes. Peep, this mem features a cartoon frog with different facial expressions, often used to convey a range of emotions. Arthur Fist, this mem features an image of the character Arthur from the children's TV show Arthur making a fist with the caption OK, I'm done. It is often used to show determination or frustration. Dad Boy, this mem features an oh, image of a frog. Oh, don't fucking talk about that boy. The caption here comes I hated Dad that boy. meme. It is often used to introduce someone or something in a humorous or unexpected way. Expanding brain, this mem features a series of images showing a brain with increasing size, each representing a different aspect of intelligence or knowledge. Shrek is love, Shrek is life, this mem features the character Shrek from the Shrek movies with the caption Shrek is love, Shrek is life. It is often used to express a love or appreciation for something or someone. It's Wednesday my dudes, this mem features an image of a frog sitting at a table with the caption it's Wednesday, my dudes. It is often used to mark the middle of the week or to express excitement for the rest of the week. I hope these it's examples Wednesday, give you dudes. a sense of the variety of memes that have been popular on the internet. Do you have any other questions about memes? Oh, that was, that was definitely an experiment. I got a few chuckles out of it. It really wasn't all that I wanted, honestly. So I'm going to have to do this again. No, Dr. Doppler, Dr. Doppler, Dr. Doppler, I know he made you. You know why I know? Because you say the I same things. I can't fucking believe this. Pink from Among Us ruined my marriage. A couple months ago, my wife said she was going out for a ladies' night. She asked me to take care of my I'm son, out. Later. So I need you to can listen wife. to this track. Yes, ma'am. I told her. After a while of waiting, she finally left and I could play my favorite game, Among Us. I hopped on my laptop, booted it up and my desktop loaded, complete with the red sus background and all my Among Us imposter fan art. I was shaking in excitement. I slowly dragged my finger across the trackpad, and watched the cursor, as it glided over to the Among Us icon. Among Us. My absolute favorite game of all time and quite possibly the best and most well-made game in the entire world. As I clicked the button my body twitched with joy at the thought of being the imposter again. My fingers drummed impatiently on my desk, as the inner slip logo faded in, and then out. Then the main title appeared. I immediately looked at Pink, as she slowly floated across the screen. Oh, how I wish I could feel those luscious, softest peaks. Pink is my queen. The real woman in my life. My wife could never be as sexy as Pink is, her soft footfalls in electrical, as I peek at her curvy form from inside a vent, waiting for the right time to strike. I could never get close to Pink, however, as if she had some kind of sixth sense, she would always leave, before I could reveal myself to her as the imposter. I pressed practice, to warm up my fingers before my first intense game of Among Us. I hit blue in comms, then crossed the hall and bent to specimen, murdering green in cold blood. The thrill of killing an animated character in an online game has never been such a rush. I then moved towards reactor, stabbing yellow in the back and then running down the corridor to the right to access decontamination. I move quietly through the halls, like a snake about to strike its prey, and I see oh no. It's pink. Standing there motionlessly, as I face her directly. Her visor shows no emotion. But she knows. I can feel it in the air. I can't kill her. She is too beautiful, too angelic, the light reflecting off of her pink bodysuit, like stars on a voided sky. She doesn't run. I am moved to tears, as I caress the screen, kissing it tenderly. Goodbye, Pink. See you soon. It will all be okay, I whisper in a soft, reassuring voice. Then, as my cursor hovers over the kill button, I hesitate. 
Thoughts of love go through my head. Red having reddish pink sus children with pink. But I have to. As the imposter, it is my duty to kill. I press the kill button and watch, as my character beheads pink silently. All I hear is the spurt of blood. There is no rush. There is only Red, standing by himself in fuel. Pink's lifeless body laying on the floor beside him. I feel nothing at first, then immense sadness, like I'm at a loved one's funeral. My son knocks on the door, interrupting my brief moment of mourning. He asks, Dad? Are you going to make me a snack? I tell him to shut up, and my voice cracks. I break down sobbing. I killed her. I killed my one true love. God, forgive me. I open the door to my son, and he has a confused look on his face. I say nothing, and walk to the kitchen to make him a sandwich. Tears roll off my face into the bread, as I lay it onto the counter. Lettuce, cheese and meat, followed by a sad swirl of mustard on top. My son is quiet. He sits on the couch, and stares at the floor. There is a depressing air around us. I serve him the sandwich and walk back to my room, contemplating life. If I kill Pink, how am I to be trusted around my family? I cried for hours, and finally my wife comes back. She sees me bawling on the bed like a child who dropped his ice cream. She then asks me, why I'm crying and mutter, I killed her. I killed my only love, Pink, in Among Us. She is filled with rage and slaps me across my face. I feel numb. She asks for a divorce. I don't reply. Instead, I take my laptop and get into my car, driving to a nearby hotel. Fast forward a few months to the divorce. It was quick and painless. After court, I ask my former wife to take me back. I can't take you back. You've always been this way. I was sus of you from the start. Someone for the fucking life of me helped my brother, 22 won't stop saying it's morbing time, he found these words on FB or something and said it stuck in his mind and every time he wakes up, shits, sleeps, pisses, everything he says it's morbing time. I'm losing my sanity, fuck you Morbius. That was very morb. McDonald's is trying to invade the world. I don't know, if you who's Joe? A distant voice asks. Instantly everyone nearby hears the sound of one thousands of bricks rapidly shuffling towards his location. The earth itself seemed to cry out in agony, until finally the ground itself split open and a horrific creature crawled from the ground, covered in mucus and tar. Joe Monolipsis points the creature whispered point I can't fucking take it anymore. Among Us has single-handedly ruined my life. The other day my teacher was teaching us Greek mythology and he mentioned a Pegasus and I immediately thought Pegasus. More like Megasus and I've never wanted to K&S more. I can't look at event without breaking down and fucking crying. I can't eat pasta without thinking I'm past it. That's pretty sus. Skiff for by Can I West. The lyrics ruin me. A mongoose, or the 25th island of Greece. The scientific name for pig. I can't fucking take it anymore. Please fucking end my suffering. Based? Are you fucking kidding me? I spend a decent portion of my life writing all of that and your response to me is based? Are you so mentally handicapped that the only word you can comprehend is based, or are you just some fucking asshole who thinks that with such a short response, he can make a statement about how meaningless what was written was? Well, I'll have you know, that what I wrote was not meaningless, in fact, I even had my written work proofread by several professors of literature. Don't believe me? I doubt you would, and your response to this will probably be based once again. Do I give a fuck? No, does it look like I give even the slightest fuck about five fucking letters? I bet you took the time to type those five letters too, I bet you sat there and chuckled to yourself for twenty hearty seconds before pressing send. You're so fucking pathetic. I'm honestly considering directing you to a psychiatrist, but I'm simply far too nice to do something. The Boomerang Nebula, located roughly 5,000 light years away from our solar system, has a temperature of 1 Kelvin, minus 272 degree sine C or minus 460 degree sine F, making it the coldest natural place in the universe humanity has discovered. First found in 1995 by astronomers in Chile, we have since learned quite a bit about it. The Boomerang Nebula is a young planetary nebula which has reached such cold temperatures due to its unusually rapid expansion. However, recently, modern online enthusiasts have raised one question science has yet been unable to answer, is it sus? 
The profound similarities between the Boomerang Nebula and the characters from the hit game Among Us have led many to believe that the Boomerang Nebula is, in fact, awfully sus, but science has yet to confirm, deny, or even respond to these questions. Follow for more updates on this developing story. Omegalo, 